Hi, I'm Mara Webster with InCreative Company, and thank you so much for tuning into one of our talks today. I'm so thrilled today to be joined by the fantastically talented Sarah Baker, starring in the Netflix series, The Kaminsky Method. And I wanted to jump back to when you first started working on the show, because I love the way that you've talked about the table reads and that first moment that you heard Michael mm -hmm. and Alan and their voices out loud taking on these characters. And with that table read very early on and a lot of the early ones, how did that part of the process really help you in figuring out who Mindy was as a character and developing her? You know, it's interesting. Yeah, those voices. And then we add another iconic voice this season with Kathleen Turner, another voice that you're like, oh my God. I kept saying, I'm like, am I the kid from Romancing the Stone? Am I like the child born out of the Romancing the Stone couple? Like, how did I end up here? Um, but yeah, I think, you know, definitely, obviously, as time has gone on, in some ways, the that sort of anxiety level has eased. But I think for the whole time on this show, you know, that father-daughter relationship is just one that I think, I mean, they're all different, but everybody can kind of relate to that. And I think that framework of what that is has always made it the, the role so clear to me. Um, because especially early on, you were really seeing Mindy in relation to just her dad. You weren't seeing much of her outside life. So it was all about that relationship for her. And I do think, you know, you know, for Mindy, it's all about um, her, he drives her crazy, but she also loves him and wants the best for him. And is always kind of pushing him towards being that better self. And uh, and I think that sort of continued. So it's sort of been the framework for the whole arc of the characters. But now you do get to see a little bit more of him weighing in on her life, not just her weighing in on his life. Um, so weirdly, it's sort of been like a role reversal, role reversal, where it's like, you know, you get to that point where you're sort of like bossing your parents around. And then they have, you know, those times where you're like, oh, yeah, I guess I do still need to sort of lean in on my parents a little bit. And I think that's what happened for Mindy this season. And because you were just mentioning how the earlier episodes, we didn't see as much of her outside of that father-daughter relationship. Did you find that once the writers started adding more elements to your character in, in that respect, that it matched what you had concocted and built out for yourself as Mindy? Or did you find that there were any choices that you'd made for your own backstory and character development early on that caused you to pivot anything? Because that's always one of the, the mysteries of working in television is you don't actually know yet where your character is going and you don't know all the details that the writers are going to come up with from the past. Yeah, it's so true. It's it's such an interesting thing because, um, you know, for instance, this season we hear a little bit more about what um, Kathleen and Michael's relationship really was. And I had always pictured it as like they were married a long time ago. They had a child um, and, you know, he probably wasn't around for a lot of it. Um, and then sort of stepped in at the end. And, and once they were, once, you know, Mindy was an adult, they formed more of a relationship. But now this season we get a little more info and it's like, oh, they were kind of one of those on again, off again couples where, you know, when it worked, it really worked great for them. And it gave me sort of a fuller picture of what Mindy's upbringing would have been. And, and I think they're, I think it probably a lot of what I thought, which is that it probably would have been really tough for her to see her mother maybe not treated the best by her dad, you know, him, you know, as he says, just not being a great husband. Um, but I do think it and just seeing them together, too, it made me realize like. And I think for Mindy, too, like, oh, there was a lot of love there, you know, there were certain like things that they couldn't get over. Um, but it was never for a lack of love. And, uh, and and I think that's one of the things I love about this season is just getting to see that sort of journey, everything come back around. And like Mindy's great with her mom, great with her dad, but now they, they kind of become a family again. 
And because you've also just always described Mindy and Sandy's relationship as feeling like there was a period of time where things probably weren't great between them. They were probably a little bit estranged, but obviously what we see in the show is the mended version of that. It feels like that's a really great precipice for why there's such an evolution still in the dynamic between them. You know, every single season, when you look at that relationship dynamic, it's completely different now than it was at the beginning of the show. And how have you and Michael really worked together on continuing to just always evolve that relationship and thinking about the different stages as they continue to find that closeness but then there's still always going to be that history in the background yeah you know I think so much of that comes in with the writing and you know Chuck um you know Chuck basically I think pretty much wrote this at home by himself over quarantine um and you know so much of it is on the page um he gives us so much to work with. And then I think it's about fine tuning. Um, for me, it's always that, um, that fine line and, you know, that comfort level you have with your parents where you can be a complete brat to them sometimes, or be really bossy to them. And it's, it's because you care about them so much. And I think, um, you know, Mindy to me has always been somebody who, um, knows how she feels about things and is really strong. And, and I think seeing her mother, you kind of see where that comes from. Um, So I think, um, I think really it's more about the story evolving and, you know, with Mindy's significant other coming into her life. um, I think she realized like she still has some stuff to learn from her dad. Um, and I think it's the same journey a lot of us go through with our parents where you, you get to be an adult and you're like, oh, okay, yep, I've got it. I know everything. And then, you know, things happen to you in your life and you're like, oh no, I still, damn it. I still have things I need to ask my parents for help on, or I, I need to help them, you know, sort through with me. So yeah, with Michael and I, I don't feel like it was, ever, it's never like a conversation. It's more about, um, you know, a lot of times the direction we had Beth McCarthy Miller and Andy Tennant this season and, um, and for much of the show. And it's about finding that fine line for me always between like, I want to show that she cares like ferociously about both of her parents without it being like, she's just attacking them and sort of nagging them all the time. Um, and I think a lot of that came both with the writing and then just sort of fine tuning the performance, but Michael and I were lucky enough to always have that chemistry where I think we've just felt comfortable with each other, which is crazy because he's Michael Douglas. But, um, once I got over the fact that he was Michael Douglas, I think getting to play his daughter was such a lucky thing because, you know, I have a dad, I know what that's like. And that was sort of, and, and Michael has a daughter. That was our way in, you know? And you just mentioned a couple of the directors that have come back for some of these final episodes. And what's the difference for you when there's a director who's worked on the show with all of you before, because they're coming in, not only understanding the story and a lot of the character beats, but they also come in knowing exactly how each of you likes to work, the way that you like to communicate, the way that you like to figure out scenes beforehand. So how does that shift when it's a returning director for you? It's the best, honestly, um, because they, yeah, it's, you know, and, and we're doing, you know, shorter seasons. It's a lot different when you're working on a network episodic show and you're doing 22 episodes and you probably have at least 10 directors, if not more come through. Um, it can be tough because they're thinking of this one little story and you're always thinking of the bigger arc. And especially the way this show is, um, more in this season than others, but there's not a lot of time that passes. We pretty much pick up every episode where the last one left off. So the continuity is, is pretty important. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, first of all, they're bo- both such pros and so experienced that that helps. They also work close closely with Chuck and have a good relationship with Chuck because, you know, Chuck's there every day on this show. It's not like he just writes it and then is, you know, working on other things. He's there every day. So he's, you know, incredibly involved in the whole creative process. Um, So to have people that work well with him and also know us was great. I mean, the one thing that's crazy this year is because we were filming in the fall of 2020 
and, you know, fall into the right up to the holidays. And, you know, there's no whispering on set anymore. You know, everybody's got masks on. You'd be surprised how many times you need to quietly express something to somebody and you, you just can't do it. So that, that was a challenge. You know, you're like, can you tell so-and-so that they have like, you know, a booger hanging out of their nose or something? It's like, no, no, no quiet communication at all anymore. It's all got to be out loud and bold. Um, but again, that having that shorthand with people you've worked with before and people, for me, it's always about the trust, you know, and it's like, as a performer, you're trying not to critique what you're doing. You're trying to just experience the emotion of it. So to have somebody come in and say, that was great. We have that. Let's do one maybe where she's a little more angry or, you know, those things. It's like, you have to be able to trust that that person is um, guiding you the right way. And I think between Chuck and Andy and Beth, like, I always felt kind of covered in my performance. So that's nice. I feel like that's their job to decide what they want to use and what they want the tone for the scene to be. And I just have to be present in all these individual moments to sort of make that happen for them, you know? Yeah. And with that assertiveness that you were mentioning that, that Mindy's always had as part of her personality, it's been really interesting to watch that journey this season because she's in essence watching her dad having lost his best friend and what that relationship dynamic is. And there's moments where she's so assertive that she shows up in the middle of his acting class and is asking him questions and trying to get him to open up. But then there's moments where she pulls back a little bit more trying to read and see what it is that he needs from her emotionally. And so how did you navigate that real push and pull within her as a character of, you know, having that assertiveness and knowing that her dad needs certain things and he's not willing to say it out loud. And at the same time, drawing back and giving him the space that he needs. Yeah. I mean, I think in some ways, you know, they're both super stubborn characters. And I think, um, you know, I think, I think that is one thing that's maybe grown over the seasons is her, she's always respected him, but I think she gains more and more respect for him and um, not just for him and his craft with, which I think she's always had a lot of respect for, but him as a person and knowing, yeah, when are those times where it's like, look, I, I know this is painful, but you have to talk about this. And other times when, you know, like they want him to come live with them and he's like, no, you know, I don't want to do that. And I think, um, I love that she's sort of delicate with him. You know, she lets him know she's there, but she's, her instinct, I think, and and maybe in like the first season would have been to like, you know, jackhammer that into happening, you know, try to stick that, you know, square peg into a round hole. And I think she sort of learned like, look, he's his own person and he, you know, he gets to make his own choices, even if I don't agree with them or I don't think it's what's best for him, you know, and she knows, you know, and I think it's just written that way that she takes her moments. Um, and, and I think, you know, her coming into the acting class, that is, I think, something a lot of people do that sort of like, we have a lot of bystanders around right now, so I can maybe needle you a little further. You would shut it down if it was just the two of us, but since we're in this classroom setting, like, maybe I can get somewhere with this, you know? I actually also wanted to ask about the journey of shooting the funeral scene at the beginning of these episodes, because, you know, it it really taps into the fact that humor can come in the darkest of moments in life. And they really have leaned into that with that episode in the most perfect and kind of like appropriate way tone wise. And so what was the journey of everybody finding what the comedic tone of that specific scene and sequence was going to be? You know, I, I give so much credit to, um, the actors that had to, to, you know, give the sort of eulogies because I mean, on the page, it was really funny, but I was like, how are, like, how is this going to feel? And then between the performances, the direction, it, it did all kind of come together. I'm like, oh, wow. Like seeing these people perform it, they're just so good. I mean, Jane Seymour stuff is so crazy. And, but it's the way she did it, completely believable, completely subtle. Um, 
yeah, that, I mean, cause I was just kind of, I had like a front row seat for that one. And, uh, you know, and from Mindy's perspective, it's, she's, she's sad about Norman too, but she's also really just concerned about her dad. Um, but to get to watch those actors, uh, deliver those eulogies, which I mean, they did, you know, Chuck really did a great job at loading the comedy in there with the writing, but then the performances were able to just be very real and nuanced. So it does end up being really funny um, despite the, but not so much that you're like, oh, this seems crazy. It's like, it has that right balance. I'm not quite sure how they struck it, to be honest, because I think that's really tough to do. And with the fact that obviously she is upset as well and mourning the loss of, of Norman, but at the same time, like we said before, she's really there just trying to take care of her dad. What were, what were the small nuanced ways in which you really wanted to allow her to experience her grief in the quieter, smaller moments, even if there weren't bigger scenes diving into the emotional side for her? Yeah. You know, it's such a mix in those moments of, you know, I mean, because you can imagine that in that sort of situation where there's so many, there's so many, you know, grief is so complex. There's so many layers to it. And if it's just, you know, your friend or something, you're having a completely pure experience that's just yours. But when it's somebody like in this case, it's like that it's really affecting her dad. Um, it's just that mix all the time in those moments of like, look at the picture of Norman, you know, which is for me, my beloved Alan, who is very much alive and well, um, thank God. <laughs> but, you know, just when you see that, like a big picture of somebody that you love at the front, I'm like, oh God, this is a lot for me, for me, Sarah, to even see Alan in that light. It's like, I can't even go there fully. But, um, but then for Mindy, it's like, you know, watching Michael perform his eulogy is just, you know, heart wrenching. And so I think it just kind of goes back and forth in those moments. Um, yeah, all, all that stuff is so internal, you know, like, and then what you see is a different thing too. But like I said, for me, it's all about sort of being in the present moment, reacting to whatever's ha happening. Um, whether that's, if it's my dad giving the eulogy, then my heart's with my dad. Maybe it's some of the other moments I'm looking at the picture. I'm thinking more about Norman. Um, so it's just kind of a, a wave that luckily I don't really, um, I'm not the one who has to cut up and make it all make sense. And there's a lot of added complexities to Mindy's relationship with Martin as well in these episodes. And in particular, when she finds out that Norman's left her money, but with the caveat of you don't get it all if you tell your, your boyfriend, essentially. And that completely shifts the dynamic of their relationship at that point. And I thought it was such an interesting choice that Mindy becomes very defensive and antagonistic, you know, whilst keeping the secret, which isn't necessarily what you would anticipate, but makes it all the more enjoyable to watch. And was that something where that was always the tone that she was taking within the writing or were some of those elements discoveries within your performance as well? Yeah, I think it was there in the writing, you know, because there were points where, you know, Chuck and I had conversations of like, you know, of me, Sarah, trying to understand, like, why is she being so nasty to him? Like, are we supposed to be suspicious of Martin in this moment? And so there was, yeah, there was definitely a balance in there of, um, you know, it's not a small amount of money you're talking about. And, and it's a lot of money. And that kind of money can kind of like be like a little bomb going off and everybody sort of reacts to it in different ways. And I think that's what happened where, you know, when you have something like that, that's really going to potentially change your life. You know, everybody can go a little cuckoo from that. Um, so for me, yeah, it was about finding sort of the anger and understanding like, oh, there's like, she's, she's anticipating because of what her dad has told her that there's going to be a wedge sort of driven between them because of this money. And she sort of preemptively resents that before she ever really gives Martin a chance to respond, you know? Um, 
So it was, it was very interesting to play that sort of where you're mad and acting mad about one thing, but it's really about this whole other thing. And Martin is just kind of hopping along carefree, no idea what's going on for a lot of it. Um, it was actually a lot of fun to play and it was fun to play once, you know, once it sort of all finally comes out. Um, it, it was fun to see that unfold and, and get to see Paul as Martin have that, those realizations too of like, Oh, <laughs> cause he's sort of the last one to know about the money. It's like, Oh, and like, he doesn't know what to do with it either. It's, it, it was a lot of fun to play. It was also really fun to watch the unfolding dynamic of the impending wedding and what that does to every single character within that bubble. But in particular, I feel like with your character, it gave us such an eye into what does she see for herself in this relationship? What does she want from her future? What does she want the dynamic of this relationship to continue evolving into? And so how did having that storyline allow you to add a lot of different layers and complexities, you know, not just to who she is at the moment, but to where this character is going to be once she's not even on screen with us anymore. Yeah, it, it, it was interesting because to me, Mindy was a character, you know, I, if you would have asked me season one, will she get married? I didn't even know if she would be the sort of person that would care about getting married. Um, you know, and I think Kathleen, um, Kathleen's character coming in and her mom being around um, and what she's going through, I think does sort of expedite all of that. Um, and, and I do think in a, in a way to even, you know, seeing her parents, I don't want to say back together again, but seeing them interact in the same space again, I think maybe does something for Mindy where she sort of realizes like, okay, marriage, their marriage was not great, but also it's all okay now, you know, I'm here because of it. And, um, they're still friends all these years later. Um, I, I think she sort of, there's an evolution with her maybe of like, um, marriage can be a great thing. And I don't have to worry that the things that happen with my parents are going to happen with me. Um, so it was fun to kind of explore that with her. And, uh, you know, the whole relationship with Martin is so sort of up and down on this season that um, it felt nice to come to a place where it's like, okay, they're, they're actually on the same page. They do love each other. And, uh, and the beauty, I think, in their case is it's actually not going to change their lives that much. It's just... Uh, coming together in front of their friends, in front of their family, most importantly, and uh, and sort of solidifying that bond that's always been there. And thinking about the comedy within the show for your performance and the fact that, I mean, you've taken on such a monumental amount of really fantastic comedic characters that have all required such different directions, different approaches and different tones. What have you found to have been the skill sets that have been very specific to working on Kaminsky Method for you as a comedic performer? Yeah, it's always interesting for, you know, it's always on, on everything I work on, it's, it's always about tone, you know, for me. And, um, you're always trying to just deliver an authentic performance. Um, but you do want to make sure you're landing those jokes. And, um, you know, on this show, we have a lot more room. There's a lot of, uh, humor that comes out of, um, you know, back and forth with, with some of these characters and just knowing the characters so well, you know, um, there's so much subtlety. There's, you know, Michael's so incredible. It's like, he's like the perfect example of somebody who plays it so straight and so subtle that it it's, it's even funnier than what you could have imagined if you took like a comedic actor and put them in there, you know, because there's so much grounded reality to what he does. Um, and Kathleen too, it's just, you know, her timing and her voice. Um, you know, there's a scene where, uh, the scene where like the proposal is starting to happen and there's a lot of commotion and she basically shuts it all down. I mean, she killed me. She's 
so funny, but the way she kind of shuts everybody down and then immediately is like, okay, go ahead. You know, just so funny. Um, so yeah, for me, it's always about just trying to keep up and hold my own with these, these legendary actors. Um, and, you know, and again, I, I just, I rely so much on the script, so much on the directors, so much on my fellow performers, um, and just try to be real and, uh, authentic in the moment and then hope that everything lands where it should and trust that somebody tells me if it's like, okay, we need to make some tweaks here or there. Yeah. Well, you've done really, really phenomenal work with your performance on this show and it's been such a pleasure to watch. And thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you so much.